Good morning all. I'll be doing a series of uh, videos uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks uh, to cut the boredom out of um, not uh, being able to do much here at the shop and uh, our lovely coronavirus uh, situation worldwide and it will entail <coughs> pardon me the um, MTST3 out of race op. A lot of questions have come out from a lot of the public that have seen the car and um, uh, directed to myself and uh, Nick who are running the car here in Victoria uh, Nick's running the front wheel drive version as well and to sort of bring some clarity to some of the points on the car that are uh, completely uh, off left centre compared to anything else on the market like an ARC or a uh, Express or an X-Ray or so forth um, I'll try and explain what the uh, differences are, what they do and um, basically why the car is presented as it is so without much ado, uh, here we go. Now this is the MTS T3, which is the car that I run with a couple of mods on it just for my own liking, but out of the box it can be actually run as it is. Mine's actually uh, put together all with uh, TP stuff, Futaba gear and so forth. And this is what it looks like when it's actually all assembled. Uh, Mid-mount conversion though, not the standard conversion. Uh, with uh, different uh, top arms on the front just to give it a bit more uh, strength and stability but uh, standard they do run quite well. Now that's uh, an assembled version so you can actually see what the car looks like when it, you've finished playing around with it to put it together but this is how the car gets supplied out of the factory in a box. And as I open the box we call this unboxing. You have instruction manual stickers, other bits and pieces, some minor instructions about the CVDs and so forth and the car. Now that's the car. Pre-assembled out of the factory in China for 10 powers in Hong Kong. Now the question came up comes up quite a fair few times why um, assembled? Speaking to Andy at uh, TP and um, the, uh, well, the, dear, the idea behind it all is that it costs them less to have the car assembled while it's in the factory than to have multiple people uh, packing up pla little plastic bags with uh, bits and pieces in them. So you don't have multiple bags sitting there. I know that there's a joy in building the car or a uh, kit of any sorts, it doesn't matter what it is. But their thinking is... <clears throat> While it's basically uh, all the parts are there, it's easier to assemble a car and much more cost effective than it is to actually bag a lot of little bits and pieces for you to pull apart, throw away, and all that type of stuff. Um, in some thinking, they're uh, applying the uh, idea of um, basically uh, less is more, so less bags, um, more for the environment. You're not throwing away thousand little bags and bits and pieces. You've only got one large bag that the car's actually installed in, or so, sorry, uh, put into for shipping. A box and another bag with uh, just little bits and pieces, which is just um, instructions and extra knickknacks for the car, screws and that type of stuff, which are actually gold, funky looking colour. Now the car's supplied out of the box as a rear drive, rear mount, rear drive car. Sorry, front wheel, four wheel drive, but rear drive on the motor sitting right in the back. Standard configuration out of a lot of them. But there is a mid mount uh, kit which comes, and that's what I have done. Converted mount to mine to mid mount. Uh, nice and easy and quick and easy to do. Uses 90% of all the components on the car as they are. The only difference is that uh, you're putting the motor in the middle. Now, going for a lot of the uh, things that I'm uh, supplied in the car out of the box, when you look at that as it is, it is as a standard out of the box supplied with a alloy fan holder, which is there, which can actually be used on the mid-mount kit. So it'll hold a 40 or a 30 millimeter fan. That's supplied as standard. CVDs on the front are supplied as standard and they're the uh, clip type with the pin. The, um, blah, 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 what else have we got here? Um, oh yeah, battery holder. The battery holder is the free floating type. A uh, couple of things on this is uh, to not my liking, but some people sort of get around it quite easily. I've modified uh, the one that's on my car, but I'll explain that a little bit later, another video possibly. 
uh, all the drive cups for the diff, we're coming out of the diff, and also the drive cups for the front, which are those coming out of the actual uh, spool, are all hardened steel. They're not plastic which is a good addition. You don't have to go out and spend any more money trying to actually put any add-ons onto it. Uh, it's got some weird stuff on it that um, has done the head of a few people, but it, it does work. The stuff does work. Uh, you just got to sort of think outside of the box a little bit. Speaking to a lot of the more um, high-end consummate A-grade racers out there, um, they they have their, uh, how would you call it, uh, doubts on how the roll bar works, but it does, and it's quick and easy to change. Sits very low on the car, and basically is bolted on the arms directly. Go into that a little bit later. <coughs> Suspension also is a little bit uh, weird and uh, off -leds, left centre. It is a O-ring on pivot ball on carbon arms. All the arms are carbon, so it's got very, very rigid suspension arms but coming on off uh, pivot balls, which are where these two screws are, and basically they are silicon um, held in the place. So you've got a silicon O-ring top and bottom, which basically uh, gives the arm its central point on the actual pivot, and then a cup cap over the top, if you can see that. There's a cap over the top, and then silicon basically on the underside and on the top. Go into that a little bit more with better detail. Now the motor mount is three pieces, which makes it easier to make it a uh, mid-conversion kit because everything basically just crosses over. And there's only two items in the uh, conversion kit that help you do that. The motor mount is at that point there, and that is actually bolted to the carrier for your spur gear. So when this moves to mid-mount conversion, that only just goes to the other side, which is really good. This brace, is actually used as well. So when you look at it, at it you're literally just flipping everything around and moving it. Uh, so you've got the spur in the middle, motor mount, and then uh, basically that brace sitting at the back. And there's a couple of additions in the mid-mount kit which helps it obviously uh, come together a lot better. The actual uh, servo mount is uh, solid. Um, I, it'll look locked onto the actual chassis by three screws, so it's very hard to tweak it left to right if you have a hit. Alloy support for your servo on the outside two uh, screws, carbon top. Uh, you can actually brace it onto the top deck to make the front really stiff, or you can actually let it float by just taking away the two little washers that sit underneath. Um, this is the steering is a little bit weird. It it does work, but if you don't like it because it is a pendulum type arrangement. What you see there is that the actual suspension is a pendulum off the top of the deck, which is here. It does work and it does work quite well, but it sort of throws a few people out on how to set it up. And the biggest problem I've had is trying to explain how do you, how you do your uh, EPA to make sure that it's got equal left and right when you set up the car before you do any trimming, mechanically set up first. So with the car, it doesn't matter what version it is or what car brand, you do all your mechanicals first, so you make sure that your, your, uh, all your links are equal length, all your uh, settings are done mechanically first on a setup station or something similar, and then you do your finite, if you can't get where you want to go to the last point, finite trimming on your radio, on your sub trims, your EPA and that type of stuff. So this is suspension, which is a pendulum type. It's old school but it seems to work um, if you don't like it though and you have the choice though uh, at the grace of uh, Andy at Team Powers what he has done is he's actually supplied me the full kits or the full parts to give it the standard on the chassis bell crank type arrangement so you're not floating off the top you're actually coming off the chassis correct post height uh, alloy not plastic alloy carriers uh, the posts, everything, all is uh, uh, available parts off the shelf. And you find that <clears throat> when you do your setup on your pendulum and you want to then convert it onto that, it's a 10 second job. You literally just put the posts down and the length of the arms, the actual steering arms, oh, not steering arms, sorry, uh, track rods for your steering, they're identical on the, on the pendulum as they are on the, on the chassis. So you can just drop everything on, basically forget about trying to actually do any uh, adjustments or otherwise, which is good. You can test both as you go along. 
So that's the introduction of the car first. Oh, my spare controller, so I better put some more double sides, haven't I? But that's the introduction of the car. That's mine, as it is, as I race. Car's good, I like it. I like anything that's different, out of the norm, makes you think a lot more. The shockers are the interesting part of all this. They're a piston through shock, so they don't have a bladder. They have no rebound when made. So what, how you get your rebound, if you like rebound, personally I like zero rebound, is that these silicon o-rings on the actual suspension pivots are your rebound. You can adjust it by uh, buying the option sets, which is thicker or thinner, top or bottom, depending on what you want to do. I like it with the thick at the top and the thin at the bottom because it stops the chassis drooping, uh, sorry, drop in height uh, unexpectedly. Go on to that a bit later. Go on to the uh, shocks in depth because they are weird. They do work. The, the first initial, uh, initial type of uh, body they had had a little bit of a problem that they leaked like a sieve. They just wouldn't hold their um, fluid. They'd be leaking at the top predominantly, not the bottom, because the bottom's a standard seal arrangement. But the top just had an absolute uh, nightmare trying to make sure that they didn't leak. They've come a long way since then. They now are very little weeping. Every shock weeps. Doesn't matter what you've got, what brand, every shock weeps a little bit. These now have come a long way that they do not weep as much, anywhere near as much as what they used to when they first came out in the uh, first T2 kit. Uh, a lot better made, a lot better seal, a lot better cap. You can lock the cap now and it will not rotate off and it has piston through, uh, which means the actual piston comes all the way through to the top because there is no bladder. So if you see that, you can see the piston. See it coming through. So it has at the top here for mounting onto the actual um, shock tower, a uh, basically a, a standoff that has a hole. So you lock it so it has the hole matching up to the pivot uh, uh, piston stroke and that allows it to go all the way through. There is a little bit of movement left and right, not a lot. Um, the weight's set, you have no adjustments at the bottom here. It is fixed in one point, it's furthest out point, but you do have your um, five adjustments here. So one, two, three, four, five, 90% of the time we run on the middle, just as it is. So there it is, so that's the T3 in kit form. That's the T3. Uh, assembled but in mid form with a couple of uh, options which I'll go through as uh, I do the series of videos. Um, time at the moment is pretty good um, quite here in the store unfortunately because of uh, all the coronavirus stuff that's going around look I hope all you guys out there are looking after yourselves don't do silly things you know wash your hands wash your hands wash your hands drink lots of hot beverages is good coffee yeah and, um, you know, practice social distancing for a while. I know it's a pain. You want to get close to your family and friends and the consequences might be grave, but, you know, we take it as it is. The day goes on. We provide ourselves with uh, toys to play with, e.g. And um, I'll get on to doing the la next uh, portions of the video as uh, the days go on. Take care, have fun, enjoy the hobby, find yourself something to play with. Uh, whether it be cars, planes, boats, keeps the mind active. It's all good stuff. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video, number two. Ciao, kids.